let us look at what you should do when, while you're doing a PhD. So as I mentioned before, there are two objectives in a, P, in a PhD degree. The first one, so at the first stage, you will learn to master a subject completely. And secondly, you will learn to advance the state of the art. Okay. So how do you master a subject? First, you will take graduate courses. And this is going to be your first year. You're going to be taking advanced level courses taught by the, the faculty of the department where you're taking your PhD. Um, you will read the literature. You will read peer-reviewed scientific papers and books. And usually at the end, basically when you're doing a PhD, you have a year or two of coursework. And after that period, you will, you will do a qualifying exam. When you do basically the qualifying exam, usually it covers different fields, and that's how we do in uh, UMass Boston. It covers multiple fields, and you're supposed to, to study papers for each field. And then you will have a written exam that you have to pass. So that means at that point, you are showing that you are proficient in computer science. And you have to be somewhat generalist at that point. And after that, you will start focusing on just one field, which is the field of your supervisor. So you will read peer-reviewed papers. And generally, when you're doing PhD, you will have, um, basically, your supervisor will start sending papers your way. There is no real course at that point after you do the qualifiers. But even before the qualifiers, you will be asked by your supervisor to read this paper, read that paper, maybe present the paper, um, maybe even have like a weekly paper reading session with other PhD students. Um, there's also other ways to master a subject, and these are conferences. So you will, during your PhD, you will go to conferences or workshops. And these are just um, gatherings of people. It's like an event where students and faculty and scientists will meet and they will be presenting papers or post posters and they will be discussing these research ideas, uh, re these research projects and these research results. So it's a great way to meet people, to find jobs. That's how I got most of my jobs after, all of my jobs after um after masters basically how i i got my next job was always by meeting someone either in a conference or in the summer school so that leads us to the second point what is a summer school usually a summer school happens in the summer but it could also happen in the winter it's usually in a break between semesters and um it is a world class um, school. It's not a real school like a, an institutional thing. It's more like a workshop for PhD students, let's say, where you are, you will be learning material for maybe two weeks and you will have subjects that you will study and they will be all very, very focused on a certain subject. And you will basically be learning about all of the related work on that subject. Um, for instance, I did a summer school in trends and concurrency, so I learned a lot about programming language that allowed you to write parallel codes, and I learned it from top experts. That's a great thing about summer schools. You will have the, the best scientists of a certain field all together in the same place, teaching the best they can to a group of students, you know, PhD students. So it's a great way to meet other people who are working on similar fields also a great way to f to meet future bosses you know people who you will work with or future supervisors that's what I actually mean um, it's also a great way to visit other universities and you will also be able to do internships especially in the US there's a lot of opportunities so you will be able to work in places such as Google or, or uh, Microsoft um, Facebook they all have really high quality internships and Generally, in the summer is when 
uh, PhD students will do that. So how do you advance the state of the art? Well, to be able to show evidence that you've advanced the state of the art, you are generally asked to do a PhD thesis. Some PhD programs also expect you to publish in international peer-reviewed conferences, especially in computer science. Different fields have different requirements. But in computer science, most people publish their work in conferences, not in journals. Um, and especially in a PhD, because the journal generally takes a long time. So what um, PhD students have to do generally is they have to publish a paper. And to publish a paper, you have to show original work and work that is going to be evaluated by experts in that field. So you have to show that your work is novel. You know, it, it's completely new. No one has done that. Not only that, it must be useful. Right? You, you, especially in computer science, in math, the notion of utility is not that strong, but you just do because you should. Uh, but here you, you have to have measurable impact to society or maybe just to a, a smaller community. So the kind of skills you need to achieve this goal are really to explore, investigate, contemplate. These are all keywords of things that you have to do by yourself, conceptualize, find issues, solve problems, figure out how software from other people works, send them emails if it doesn't, um, try to find papers from the 60s or really old that explain the thing that you've already, you thought it was new, but it wasn't. There's gonna be a lot of art archivist work in finding all the references and all that kind of stuff. Some people find that very exciting, some people don't like it. But if you are doing a PhD, you will definitely need to do it. Um, but at the end of this, you will be the world expert on a particular subject. And actually, there's this very nice um, illustration of what is a PhD. So if you look at this white thing, it's basically the human, the all the the things that we might be able to ever be possible uh, ever be able to know so this is the let's say that this outer circle is all of the possible human knowledge and let's say that this circle is everything we know so this is everything we know so let's say that you do a master's you will learn basically this is a field let's say and if you learn a master's you will be, you will study basically this funneling thing right you will start from th something you know you're studying computer science which is let's say this this rim right here and you will start learning i don't know maybe uh, networks and then you will once you know you're studying in a master's you will basically know everything there is to know about general networking. But then you start your PhD and you study it a bit more. You, you get to the end of your coursework and you, at some point you need to start thinking about writing a thesis proposal. That is when, when you reach the rim of human knowledge. So this is where you've identified, you've learned everything there is to know, and you've identified a possible path of exploration. So this is, you are now ready to achieve step two in a PhD program, which is now you should learn something new and you should be able to show the world that something new is important. And that is basically what a PhD is doing. <laughs> so, the contribution in the grand scheme of things is going to be small, but it is very cool to be able to push the boundary a bit of everything that we know, and you will be able to, to do exactly that. You will be able to extend the knowledge of everything that we know, we as a group of humanity. Um, so then this is a list on how to pursue a PhD effectively. And this comes from 
the five commandments of uh, that come from were written by Matt Might, John R Rieger, and Suresh Venka. Um, and these are essentially five things that the PhD advisor should do and the PhD should do. And this is a, a, a good, I like this guide as it gives you kind of a baseline of, you know, expectations. What you should, you as a student should expect from your supervisor and what your supervisor should expect from you. And this is something that you should talk about if you're interested in in doing a PhD with someone is definitely try to understand the expectations. So a PhD advisor should advise the student, right? Help help the student find a, a thesis topic, teach the student how to do research, um, teach them how to write scientific papers, uh, teach them how to give talks. And these are basically in a in short all the skills that you need to be efficient like a good phd student the phd advisor will also protect the student they will try to secure the the, the advisor or the supervisor will provide funds to the student so that the student doesn't have to worry about how they're going to get paid their phd is going to be paid and it's the role of the advisor to secure those funds and try to work with the student to maybe find fellowships and all that stuff. The advisor should also be clear and realistic when explaining to the student what is their career prospects. What can you do with this field? What you're expected to do? What jobs are available for that kind of stuff that you're doing and so on. It should also the PhD advisor should also give help in terms of framing the research that 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 student is going to start from. So basically, you're gonna when you start a PhD, you're not asked to come up with an idea on your own. That's something you work with your PhD advisor because you want to work with your PhD advisor, right? If you if you if you're doing everything on your own, then you don't need a PhD advisor. And then you shouldn't do a PhD. <laughs> um, so if you do a PhD advisor, it's because you should be doing something with someone. And generally, that means following the advisor's um, research project um, perspective or vision. So that it's the role of the supervisor or the advisor to give you a frame. This is where we're going. This is why it's, this is important. And this is more or less what you should be working on. And then from there on, it's the role of the PhD student to find their way. It should always be, but their way should be related to what the PhD advisor is interested in. So what does the PhD student has to do? Well, a PhD student has to be, before they even start a PhD, that is very important. They should get educated about the career prospects after they complete the PhD. That's the student's or the prospective student's responsibility, right? I gave you already some stats, but that's not enough. You should do your own homework, try to figure out why. If, assuming you do get a PhD, are you happy with the kind of jobs that you will be offered? You know, because the jobs will be different if you, if you, you've done a PhD or not. Um, so you will, as a, as a prospective student, you will need to determine whether or not these careers prospects match your expectations, whether that's something you're interested in or not. And then you have to, as a PhD student, you have to know that PhD is, is not just research. It's also coursework. It's also disqualifying exams is also the writing the thesis. It's also giving presentations. There's a lot of things that are also part of the PhD. It's not just pure research. It's not just, oh, go, go, go do whatever you want. No, things have their own. Um, there's a lot of, especially these four things uh, or three things, uh, quals, thesis, and coursework are things you will do in 
any PhD. So that's something you have to account for, whether it's something that interests you or not. Um, also presentations, which is omitted here. You will also need to work hard, as we mentioned, as I mentioned before. Doing a PhD is something that requires more work, considerably more work than um, undergraduate degree or even a master's. So that's something you need to be ready for. And also you need to maintain a rhythm. After working for, I don't know, four, five years, you'll be working for that amount of time. It is a marathon. It's not a, it's not a sprint. So you have to learn to be productive. You have to learn to not procrastinate. You have to learn, you have to be prepared for all of these things. You are also responsible for following the PhD program. That's not the supervisor's responsibility. You are the one who is responsible for knowing what are the program's deadlines and requirements, and you are the one who has to meet them. No one else. So that's just a, an overall of what are the expectations. So in the next video, I want to talk a bit about uh, my research lab.